Beautiful. So do I sit here? Beautiful. Um, well, you know, Bono, first of all, you know, we've seen each other a lot over the last couple of years, but I was particularly relieved uh, to see you uh, a couple of days ago. Why? <laughs> well, I, I saw you were named Woman of the Year by Glamour magazine, and I was just wondering if there was some transformation that had happened in that time. It's, it's ongoing, the transformation. <laughs> and it comes from my daughters and my wife who think that it's time for me to be more of a feminist man, and I am trying my very best. <laughs> in, it, in reality, this is something you've cared about for a long time. Uh, women? You, <laughs> <laughs> oh, women's issues. Let's be clear. Uh, uh, I'm going to have to uh, re reflect on your French teacher here. Um, but uh, you, you've uh, talked about poverty is sexist, and I wondered if you might want to comment a little bit on uh, your philosophy. Yes, well, it, I mean, I think you can feel, uh, to continue the metaphor, I, I, I think you can feel the, the tectonic plates shift, and I think there's sort of, there's um, all the great movements um, uh, really have, have been sort of have had a feminine spirit. If I think of the Renaissance or the 60s, it's an attempt to sort of wrestle the world away from men and 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 the sort of macho view of the world. And and uh, I even think you know here in the UK, I think about you know how after the Second World War and you know how just literally born into the war were these incredible um, spirits of musicians that I so adore, like the Beatles, who became the sort of antidote to that sort of old macho, and I think of all you need is love, and I think of the, the sort of the chorus of the 60s, and I think it's, a, it's been a long time now since the, the Second World War, and, and, and we haven't seen a world war in 70 years, and it feels like the world is developing some, some amnesia about it, and I'm nervous, and I want to see, and the, 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 there are many, many out there who agree as a man that I think w women would just do a better job being in charge. That's um, <laughs> and the poverty is sexist. Poverty is sexist. It's, it's sort of obvious to state, but obviously women take the brunt of poverty more than anything. But without poverty is sexist, we have a, a campaign called Girls Count. And taking, say, education, for example, there's 130 million girls who might go to school who don't. And we have a campaign where we want 130 million people to sign up to stand beside one of these women and to take a number. I've taken the number 22, <laughs> uh, which, which I, I think is a very attractive number. And, <laughs> um, but it's just a really vivid campaign, and I think you're going to see over the next few years a real uh, surge in the leadership of women. You mentioned Malala, and um, she's an extraordinary example. Indeed. Um, Mary Robinson being another, or many of... Uh, Thank you for that analogy. By the way. <laughs> Sasha Baron Cohen and Mary Robinson. <laughs> if I can do that, I can do anything. <laughs> Um, uh, and many of the, uh, the leaders, uh, social entrepreneurs uh, in this room uh, are uh, working with to girls house. and uh, uh, female empowerment, uh, uh, girls' education. Um, but but for, for you, your, your path to becoming a, a, a world statesman, a, a passionate advocate for, for, for the poor, did it, did it start, I've heard it started uh, on a trip with your wife to Ethiopia in the, in the mid '80s, is that is that right, or was it? Uh, it, 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 it probably goes back further um, with um, I, Irish, my Irishness. But yes, it, it started to take shape um, with the famine in Ethiopia in the mid '80s. Um, I worked there with my young wife uh, for a month and a bit, just just getting to trying to get useful and trying to understand these issues, worked in an orphanage. Um, I was known as the girl with a beard. <laughs> and, um, and I learned a lot, but I started to understand then the, the structural aspect of poverty. And um, 
Um, and, and, you know, when we did Live Aid and We Are the World and all, we, we, we raised, I think it was like $250 million and we were punching the air and we thought that's incredible. And then we realized, it was explained to me, that actually the continent of Africa spends $250 million a week paying back old loans um, um, taken out during the Cold War um, to the richest countries. And, the person that explained that to me is here, actually. Two of the people who've had the most profound influence on my life and two co-founders of one are here. And one of them lives here in Oxford, Lucy Matthew. And I don't know where she is, but I would like to give her my heartfelt thanks. And, and Jamie Drummond is the most remarkable brain, but uh, he is insufferable for one other reason. Um, he thinks he's Irish, and uh, <laughs> Jamie Drummond spends his summers in Ireland uh, also being infected by that bug that just doesn't like injustice. You, you, um, you, know, you have uh, this other career. Um, uh, some of you may have heard uh, Bono does some music. Um, I have a day job. And I've always wondered, so uh, you know, uh, the global treasures we've recognized in the past that have had global impact. Uh, Archbishop Tutu, the Dalai Lama, um, Muhammad Yunus, that's what they've done. Their lives have been that. And, and yet, you've had this incredible impact in this world. You've had an incredible impact in the, in the world of music. And I wonder if one infuses the other. How do you, do you keep them separate? Do they, does your music inspire your activism? Does your activism inspire the music? Yeah, well, before, we got really organized. Uh, uh, now one has seven, nearly eight million uh, members, actually, and I think over three million of them uh, south of the equator. Before we got to this place, um, you know, I was working for, for Nelson Mandela um, with U2 uh, at the age of 18. We did our first anti-apartheid show, and a lot of the ANC who fled South Africa ended up in Dublin. And um, so it's been in us for a while, and, and with our band, we had this thing, and I, it, you know, our family prayer is to be useful, you know? And as a band, um, we we're very, very annoying, uh, sort of pain in the arse, idealists. And we wondered, when we were 20, 21, you know, we were wondering, is this really a useful thing to do with your life? Hmm. Um, with what's going on in the world. And, and so f for us, the permission to be in a band came with this idea that we could perhaps use this band um, and, and, and that the world was, we sensed was more malleable than we were told it was and that it could be kicked or kissed or caressed or you know, into shape, into better shape. And so the band are really committed to all this stuff. They just find me and the situations that I find myself in to be a little insufferable. <laughs> and, uh, and, and that's the only problem. It's the company I keep. It's very unhip a lot of the time. And they are excruciated at mm. the company I keep. Mm. <laughs> Not you. Uh, they really... They love Jeff Scull. Oh, oh, oh. Edge, where are you? And they really love today. Jeff Scull, yeah. except they're laughing at the idea of you calling or your organization referring to me as a treasure. That, <laughs> that, that will go down horribly when I return to rehearsals tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> they will read it, but I don't have them told them. If I tell them that I'm coming here, they wouldn't let me. So, uh, you know, so they will read about this. Yeah, it is live streamed, I believe. Yes. Hello, guys. Uh, uh, yeah. Sorry, Larry. Yeah. Uh, so Bono on sick leave right now. Um, you, you mentioned one, and uh, it's eight million members, and uh, I, know, I know that uh, that's just the tip of the iceberg. And I, I wondered if, uh, for this audience if you wanted to talk a little bit more about what one does and why it's had such a big impact. Well, it, it, this, Americans will understand this analogy, but um, in one, we, we call ourselves the NRA for the world's poor. That's the National Rifle Association. <laughs> You often wonder why in America so many people got guns, and it's like, it's, is it not horribly obvious this is really bad? And, <laughs> and I mean, we all do. And, <laughs> and, and so, in my social entrepreneurialness, 
Uh, I'm, I'm thinking, how do they pull that off, these people? And it turns out the NRA, the National Rifle Association, are really good. And they have a sort of, uh, a, they have a two twin, a sort of twin track approach where, of inside maneuvering and outside mobilization. And they spend a ridiculous amount of money every year promoting their uh, cause. And if you stand up against their cause, they'll spend a ridiculous amount of money against you. And um, so I'm fucked from now. Uh, <laughs> but um, we, we asked ourselves the question, why is it that you know, cigarette companies and indeed some very fine companies can afford all these fancy ass lobbyists and the world's poor don't have that kind of firepower because they can't afford it. So we tried to make one that. And, and so if a uh, lawmaker in, say, the United States or in Germany or in France steps out against us, we will follow them to their, to their town hall meetings, mm. to their, um, their surgeries, their offices. And we, we will, in fact, we will, wait, we will wait for them outside their church. Mm. <laughs> and that really hurts some people. <laughs> and... Uh, and it's, you know, we were funded originally by uh, Bill and Melinda Gates, but now we have Mike Bloomberg, we have mm. incredible uh, people, John Doerr, the technologist yeah. that you know, yeah. Northern California, and uh, the Buffett family. We now have, we have the ability to sort of really dignify this. And, and now, as I was saying earlier, it's, we're going south. And um, I had a very humbling meeting with some a Senegalese uh, 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 man, who had, I asked him, could you give me some advice? And he said, yes, Bono. Um, just, it's a Senegalese proverb. Um, if uh, you wish to cut a man's hair, it is better if he's in the room. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, oh. um, yeah. I said, would, would, would you be referring to the white messiah complex then? Uh, and, uh, right. and he said, yes. And <laughs> I think it's, you know, so we realize that uh, we really, it's very important to serve, um, is to, to, to understand and to be bottom up rather than top down. And our organization one is, is becoming that kind of an organization. We took on the oil companies and the, the uh, mining companies with a transparency um, uh, um, um, uh, legislation, which made it, um, illegal not to publish how much you paid for mining rights. Right. Sounds obvious, Big. correct? Big. Um, yeah. We succeeded, along with, with the Publish What You Pay Coalition and George Soros right behind, we succeeded in, in, the, in getting this through Congress in the United States, getting it through Europe, and then an interesting thing happened. The American Petroleum Institute woke up, hmm. injuncted the SEC, and is stopping this. Oh. And, and that is a, is a question we should ask ourselves. Why would the American Petroleum Institute be interested in stopping that level of transparency? And I'll tell you why. Mm. Because it would advantage other countries who are prepared to be corrupt to get those mining rights. That is where corruption lives. Corruption lives mm. in that uh, region between the declared amounts of money and the real amounts of money that are paid. And uh, so I'm very proud of, of, of the work that one did there too, so. Um, I, I wanna just play back some of what you just said because I think um, oh dear. there are a lot of, uh, oh. <laughs> there are a lot of uh, important things uh, in, in all of that. Um, it sounds like, uh, so first, um, you, you have this access and ability to represent uh, the poor, uh, even to their own leaders and around the world. And that access is pretty unique, and you've, you've leveraged that. So, you know, one, the organization plus Bono uh, equals a lot, right? And some, somewhere along the line, you, 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 there was a lesson uh, that it wasn't about you, and uh, it wasn't about the outsider coming in, but empowering the people themselves. Yeah, yeah, I think that's right. Um, um, I think I think we we've, we've all made the mistakes of 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 galloping out ahead of 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 ourselves, and um, I'm very 
pleased um, um, that w to, to say that one day I, I'm sure that our membership um, will be much larger in the South and that I, I will be, my voice will be drowned out and, and a lot of people will be very happy about that. Um, um, but I, 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 I will too. And um, the thing is, just to try and explain, I think what you're getting at is why, why are you there? Well, I am above all else a top line melody person. I'm a singer. And what the singer, if you're a songwriter, you're looking, as, as Don will understand, you're looking for Don Henley here, one of the truly great songwriters of all time. Yeah. Um, <laughs> what, what Don will understand is that is the difference between harmony and top line, counterpoint and top line, that's our job. You've to try, you're looking for the clear thought in the room. It's become very handy in politics and activism and, uh, and in other areas when I'm just trying to find the top line melody. And, and I think that for me, um, the, the humbling thing was to realize that the top line melody in the end is that it is not about a, any single personalities, no matter how luminous, mm. it is always social movements that change the world, not individuals, social movements. And that's really what the Skull Foundation uh, supports. And that's why I'm so thrilled and honored to be here. Yeah. Um, as well so, as social entrepreneurs. Social entrepreneurs. As well. And uh, you know, I didn't finish summarizing what, what you had said, because there was an important uh, line in there. Um, and I'll just mention that a lot of us, um, you know, we're, we're doing our best to, to change the world, and often that means taking on powerful interests. Uh, in, in my movie world, uh, we've done films that are, you know, sort of, uh, you know, an inconvenient truth is not exactly welcomed by the fossil fuel companies, uh, Fast Food Nation and Food Inc., not exactly, you know, happy uh, moments for uh, the fast food companies, uh, uh, Citizen Four, uh, about Edward Snowden, and. Uh, the Fifth Estate, uh, about WikiLeaks, probably not welcomed by the intelligence agencies. Um, and so in, in your previous uh, uh, commentary, you said you were fucked. And um, I think that, that that's Irish for meaning that uh, you're willing uh, to take a risk uh, for opportunity for others. <laughs> ah. <laughs> um, I hadn't thought of that, but while I'm listening to you talk, um, um, I don't know if Stephanie ever says to you, my, my wife thinks I have a multi-personality disorder. Um, um, Stephanie just thinks that you're sort of polymathic. But, but uh, ha, I'm just saying, you've got a lot in your head. I mean, it, it, it's sort of amazing that you can have, and I say you pretend that you just stumble into these areas, oh my God, how did this happen? <laughs> and, uh, oh, the inconvenient truth, oh my God, oh, there's another one. Oh dear, eBay, oh dear. Yeah, oh, yeah. Stephanie, that, yeah, PayPal did good too, didn't it? Yeah, yeah. So, and meaning, uh, I have to say, Sally and this team mm. that you have, I think I'm figuring out how you do it um, by having the smartest people in the world around you, and, and, uh, and I think that is, that is the only way um, a charlatan like myself can get away with this, is because I really do hang out with some very clever people. Um, I, I'd like to shift gears for a sec. I know we're, we're uh, going to run low on time, and uh, you know, one, one of the things that uh, uh, I've learned is surrounding yourself with uh, great people is, is important. And, I think wisdom is, is not having the answers, but asking the right questions. Uh, Columbo. <laughs> <So. Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> Got him. <laughs> yeah. so, 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 Bono, what, what, check what, it out on YouTube. <laughs> I really did. I got it. <laughs> so, what, what should I ask you? <laughs> Very detective, mm. uh, Columbo. Um, um, How's your next album doing? Uh, well, right. I can tell you it's nearly completed. How about that? How about that? Yeah. yeah. And I, 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 again, I go back to 
the permission that I have to do the work I do is given to me by these three men that I've known mm. as long as I've... Actually, I, I went, I asked Ali out on our first date the week I joined you two. And so my wife, my, my wife and my partner in my life, and, and it's quite humbling to realize that I am, as an artist, only one quarter of a person, okay. and as a person, one half. And I have been made truly by the people around me. And, um, and they, the, the excitement of you two has given us permission um, to do the activism we do. The journey, the wildest journey, if I was, if you, uh, the, the thing that's the most surprising for me mm is in not the activism, because that was built into you too, as I was saying earlier. But the journey into commerce is, is the head-scratching one for me. Right. Because if, uh, it's for me to understand the role of entrepreneurs and social entrepreneurs, and Hamdi, what he's done with Chobani, it's this ridiculous, it's an incredible thing. I don't know if Hamdi's still here. Um, I think he had to take off. But uh, he had to take off. Get back to the mountain. Make another billion. Uh, <laughs> uh, for refugees. Yes, uh, yes. Uh, <laughs> that is why we love him. Um, but <laughs> that actually wasn't a joke. <laughs> um, yeah. But, but, but I, 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 the real humbling thing for me was, was the journey to understanding the role of commerce and to realize that you, people, you can't take people out of poverty um, mm -hmm. without um, the sort of entrepreneurial capitalism. And I was even just saying the word capitalism coming from a sort of lefty household, it was like, what's that? Mm -hmm. And you know, capitalism is not uh, immoral, but it is amoral and it requires instruction. Mm -hmm. We have to tell it what to do and what I like, yes. it has to serve, yes. not be served. Um, and I learned this um, on our work with, with Extreme Poverty from an amazing character, and I really, I would hope that he would have him here to the Skull Forum if you haven't already, but, but um, Mohammed Ibrahim. He, to me, is, one, oh, yeah. is a clarion voice on the love, continent love of Africa, yeah. and he didn't come out of the church or out of politics. He's like a science guy. He, he, came, he became as telecom billionaire who just has been really strategic in the way that he gave, gives money um, out fighting corruption, the Ibrahim Index, etc. Mm -hmm. But he challenged me. He said, why, if you really, why, first of all, he said, what, what's, what, it's, what is it with Africa in you? <laughs> and I said, well, we're Irish, we're kind of African. <laughs> and we all go and back went, to Africa. Oh, yeah, you are, kind of. And uh, we have a few things in common here, you know? And um, colonialism, for a start, <laughs> if you're listening. Uh, the jackboot of colonialism. Uh, 700 years, my dad would say. 700 years. And then he met, uh, he met Princess Diana. He was, oh, lovely to meet you. Uh, and I figured out royalty right there. Um, oh. But, 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 um, uh, 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 Mah uh, uh, Mo, as, as he allows us to call him, has joined our board and is now working with us on this rise idea. Mm -hmm. He was the one who said, you know, if you believe in us, then invest with us, invest in us. It dignifies us. These, these Vertical relationships are of the past. The future is horizontal relationships. We partner. Forget the old paternalism. Business is the way forward. And then he said, you know, we have 15 million jobs required on the continent of Africa next year. No, and the year after that, another 15. No NGO will solve that problem. No government will solve that problem. And I realized that I'm becoming interested in commerce. And I was flying over Dar es Salaam in a little small airplane. And I was telling Edge this uh, in our local pub in Finnegan's in Dublin. Mm. And I was looking down, I was looking at quarrying, and I was looking at the trains, and I was looking at this. And Edge just looked up and went, 
man, you've got to get back into the studio. This is really, <laughs> this is really far-fetched stuff. And I says, why is, why is that? And he said, no, no you've, you've, you've really gone off now. You, are you talking about quarrying? <laughs> is that quarrying? I said, yes. And trains and, and infrastructure. I said, yeah, I, I, I was. I was. <laughs> and, but I realized that this is the route out of poverty and getting the business community. That's, that's the social entrepreneur piece of this puzzle and why it's so important and why I, I just called out Chobani. I traveled um, with, with, with Hamdi in Africa and watched the, the lights go on and what he's doing in refugees uh, is, is really critical. You know, I'm really glad I asked that question. Um, uh, so, <laughs> um, I, just, I just wanted to close, you, you, you mentioned, so we have a special friend uh, here, Bill, Bill McGlashan, who runs uh, TPG Growth. You have friends? Well, I, I said we. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, and uh, so, so Bill and ourselves and Mo and uh, a few others have gotten together to do something called, called the Rise Fund, which is um, the, the world's first uh, sort of collective impact investing uh, fund. And um, what should I ask? Um, <laughs> yeah. Why'd you do it? Commerce. <laughs> and uh, um, the other piece that brought me to Rise and Bill McGlashan was in order to, you know, when we were fighting with the one campaign to get universal access to AIDS drugs, now 18 million people on AIDS drugs, it was thought to be impossible. We needed commerce. Yes. Um, we needed, we needed commerce to get behind us, um, not just into the philanthropy budgets, but into the marketing budgets, the communication of this, and that's a red phone. I just yes. want to pull it out <laughs> because that phone actually saves lives. And and Steve Jobs helped us come up with um, helps um, us come up with the idea of red, and and we're nearly at half a billion. But it's the noise red makes that's the most important thing. And Steve Jobs also pointed me in the direction of Bill McGlashan, and and uh, when he was very. Uh, very ill. Um, towards the end of, of his times, um, he he encouraged me to to think about um, creativity in, in in within the construct of capitalism. He, he he himself was not a very material guy. He lived very simply, whatever. But he understood the force of uh, I mean, if you few private jets, you know, pretty simple. Um, <laughs> um, no, lived in a, li honestly, genuinely lived a quite a, a, a humble life. Uh, and he, he said, he understood that I need to understand technology um, because it's changing the face of art and culture as well as the world. And he knew that I, I have to do things to learn. And he, he wished me to be keeping the kind of company um, that is Bill McGlashan. And Bill McGlashan is a guy that I met who I felt uh, immediately um, comfortable in his company. And um, he worked at TPG. And I asked people about TPG, and they, people said, oh, they're motherfuckers. They are really <laughs> badass. <laughs> and I thought, well, I don't want to be working. And I went, no, I do. <laughs> if we want to change things and we want to make an impact, we can't be hippie-ish about this. This is, it can't be sort of all hold hands and wishful thinking. And impact investing has really been an excuse for good people to do bad deals. Mm. And with <laughs> TPG and the discipline that this company brings and the leadership of, of, uh, of Bill McGlashan, I think, and you, so the three of us got this going. I think, um, I think we can really, um, um, unlock a lot of resources um, to some of the problems um, that the world is facing. And I'm, I'm, I'm learning amazing things like how to count and stuff. <laughs> uh, I, I'd like to close by uh, saying, Bono, you are uh, incredibly inspiring. Uh, your brain works in so many different directions and all for for the good of the world. Uh, I, I, I hope uh, you all have appreciated um, uh, meeting the real Bono. This is the authentic uh, fellow that uh, I've come to know, and you, you really are uh, a global treasure. Thank you. Right back at you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you.
<laughs> That's great. Uh, the Jeff Skull Talk Show. <laughs> Light.